have heard people talking about end-to-end -end machine learning or end-to-end -end conversational AI and not been entirely clear as to what they meant by that. Today I'm going to talk about what end-to-end -end machine learning is, what it might look like in a conversational AI system, and some of its benefits and drawbacks in NLP for developers. Basically, an end-to-end -end system is a single system that does all of the tasks you need for a specific machine learning application. So it will take in raw input, whether that's text or pixels or sensor data, and give you output that is in the final format that you want it to be in. In a dialogue system, your raw input might be something like, I want to buy a car, some text that your user is providing. Your useful output might be choosing between a number of different things that your assistant could say. So in this example, what's your budget is probably the best response to select. Bicycles are better, probably not very helpful for this person who's already said that they want to buy a car, and just defining what a car is would be too general to be helpful. The majority of dialogue systems currently use multiple models in between the raw input and the useful output. You have an intent classifier to broadly classify what the user is saying into one of the series of pre-specified classes, and a dialogue policy to pick the correct thing for the robot to say next. In contrast, an end-to-end -end system has a single model in the middle that takes in the input and gives out the response without the intermediate steps like providing an intent classification. A big difference between these systems is how they're trained. So in a traditional multi-model system, each module is trained independently. So the intent classifier is trained just to identify intents, and the dialogue policy is trained just to select the correct next turn. In an end-to-end -end system, the whole system is updated at the same time. How are they used? End-to-end -end machine learning is a general machine learning approach that replaces many modules that are used in conjunction with each other with a single larger model. It's used in many applications, including automatic speech recognition, co-reference resolution, and a variety of NLP applications. In dialogue systems in particular, it's used to combine the intent classification and the dialogue policy into a single system. What are some of the benefits of end-to-end -end systems? So a big one is because you don't have multiple systems, an error in an earlier system can't affect a later system. So in my dialogue example, an incorrectly identified intent would then lead to my dialogue policy probably picking the wrong thing to say. And if you don't have a separate intent classifier, that's not an issue. In addition, you don't need to build and maintain multiple models, which can be time consuming. Also empirically, so based on experimental work, end-to-end -end systems seem to be a little bit better for more general, vaguer tasks. So instead of specifically ordering a pizza, specifying what toppings you are, inputting your address, just sort of talking about pizza and what you like about food might be a better application for an end-to-end -end system. There are some pretty big drawbacks, however. A big one is that end-to-end -end systems often need a lot more training data, sometimes in order of magnitude more training data than having several smaller, simpler models. This means that you as a developer will need to shift some effort away from feature engineering and more into data collection and curation. In addition, results can be somewhat inconsistent and a little bit less explainable. So in my example where the intent is classified incorrectly and that leads to a wrong decision by the dialogue policy, it's pretty clear to see where something went wrong. In an end-to-end -end system, all you know is that the output was wrong. They can also be slower to adjust or retrain or fine tune. Because it's one large system that's doing everything, it generally has more weights, more parameters, and therefore takes more memory and compute, particularly for updating. And finally, evaluation is more difficult. So I talked in the intense video in this series about how taking uh, a text string and figuring out what class it belongs to makes it much simpler to figure out how well your model is doing. For an end-to-end -end system, quantifying how well a conversation is going, how well your user is meeting their needs is a little bit more difficult than figuring out whether howdy is being correctly identified as a greeting. What are some common errors and gotchas? So a big one is that end-to-end -end systems tend to be biased towards the more frequent outputs or outcomes, whatever those are. Because you're not treating each intent, say, as a separate case, you are combining them all together, so things that happen more commonly in the population of data samples overall are going to be more likely to be picked by your model. And this leads to an assumption that I've run into kind of a lot, which is that building a single end-to-end -end system is going to be less work for you as a developer. 
It might be because you're not building and maintaining multiple sub modules, but identifying errors, why they're occurring and curating your training data is really important with this particular type of system and can be pretty tricky. And finally, you really do need to figure out how specifically you are going to evaluate an end-to-end -end system before you start building it. So beyond just the loss function and trying to figure out what an error looks like for backpropagation, how well is your system working in place can be a little bit more difficult. Some other resources that you may find helpful. Uh, there's a really nice 2017 paper about the limits of end-to-end -end learning that really discusses some of the very successful use cases of this particular technology and also some places where it tends to break down and the theoretical limits of this approach. In addition, in our recent Rasa 2.0 alpha announcement, please feel free to try that out if you're interested, uh, we announced that we are actually supporting end-to-end -end learning in Rasa. So we're not necessarily suggesting that you throw out intents entirely, but for very sort of general chit-chatty tasks, it might make a sense to have an end-to-end -end portion as well as intents for those activities that you care a lot about. Thanks for joining me today on NLP for Developers. I hope this was helpful for you and gave you some more context about end-to-end -end machine learning and where it works well and where maybe it's not the best choice. Thanks for joining.